ladies and gentlemen, the city of Rotterdam is proud to be your digital co-host for this second World Hydrogen Summit. Hydrogen will be the next major step for the city and the region. Green hydrogen is the future. The current energy and fuel system will be completely overhauled over the next 30 years. Hydrogen is going to play a crucial role. In Rotterdam, we are setting up projects that, together, will realize all parts of the hydrogen chain. Personally, I find this to be a particularly inspiring time. You can see and feel that we're building a new sustainable energy system together. Hydrogen is basically the strategy is very much an investment agenda. And in this way to these big investments in the coming years, we will also help now economic recovery after this terrible COVID crisis. And today we have supported 285 projects in Europe uh, for about 1.07 billion euro of public money. And since this is a public-private partnership, uh, we also expect, of course, the private side to uh, uh, contribute, and they contributed with 1.08 billion euros. So I can say that together since uh, 2008, we have spent more than 2 billion euro in this partnership. Queensland has a fast developing hydrogen supply chain and we have a strong interest in developing hydrogen as a major storage vector of renewable energy for future trade and investment. We may understand that hydrogen is important for achieving the carbon neutrality. To promote our technical development in those priority fields, the government of Japan plan to create a new fund of 2 trillion yen for 10 years research and development activities. We feel that uh, hydrogen uh, has a, a very special role to play because hydrogen will bridge the gap that we see currently between the energy consumptions, consumption region of the world and the uh, regions of the world that are, have a, are rich in renewables potential. And this mismatch will be globally uh, towards decarbonization will be met with hydrogen. It means a lot of uh, hydrogen, green hydrogen, coming alive, let's call it. One million, ten million, etc. tons coming up. And uh, the question obviously is uh, how to match this capacity which needs to come at the scale to be cost competitive, how to match it with the off-taking side. And there is where the investment opportunities are. And I think uh, governments and companies uh, need to be taking risks. Uh, governments need to be taking policies. And companies actually have to make investments now before the market is fully developed. And I think the payoff can be large because this is you know, potentially a $10 trillion industry. We're looking at decarbonizing large industrial clusters uh, for, of heavy industry. And now we're talking instead of megawatts into gigawatt scale. And one of the bold projects there is North H2, where we're trying to couple um, a large offshore wind development directly to a backbone of dedicated hydrogen lines to decarbonize a large part of Dutch and German industry. Pure hydrogen will, will need new infrastructure, such as pipelines, storage, hydrogen-ready engines, gas turbines, hydrogen cars, which will take time to design and deploy. But it's going to happen. I'm not shy to say that this industry is going to be massive. I'm so very pleased to be able to join you virtually at the second World Hydrogen Summit. This is an important forum to help us realise the global opportunities presented by low carbon hydrogen. A lot has changed since the summit last year. COVID-19 has presented us with some really unique challenges, but it is also an opportunity to grow back greener and more sustainably. But in order to phase out fossil fuels completely, we need to take renewables to a whole new level. That is the reason why Denmark has decided to turn off our oil and gas valves by 2050, making Denmark the biggest oil and gas producer to have established a cutoff date so far. One of the challenges facing many countries in the development of clean hydrogen is the ability to produce the required amounts of cheap, renewable energy to drive clean hydrogen exports. Now this is not a problem here in South Australia and we're aiming to have green hydrogen export operation by 2025. 
hydrogen, particularly green hydrogen, is a crucial facilitator to achieve the objectives of the Green Deal, contributing to the pursuit of decarbonization objectives and to achieving climate neutrality in Europe. Really here, this vision of so-called sector coupling shows how hydrogen can couple and, and decouple from the grid in unique ways. And again, the value is not just for one application or sector, but um, the diversity or what we call the Swiss Army knife of energy in many ways. We've come to the end of the World Hydrogen Summit. It has been a fantastic event with a lot of inspiring presentations. I hope that I can welcome you all in Rotterdam. Till next year. <laughs>